So the following is an introduction to solving nonlinear equations using Python. Specifically, we'll use the fsolve function from the scipy.optimize library. And um, we'll start with one equation and one unknown, and then move on to systems of equations. <coughs> so as a, a quick exercise, I want you to recall for a minute what the key elements were to solving nonlinear equations. So think about how we solved them, what was needed, what the parts were, and what the form of the function was. So go ahead and pause this for just a moment and work through that. So remember, the things that we, uh, we did included a function, f of x equals 0, and we needed an initial guess. And then in Python, the solver is called fsolve. And so before we learn about the details about how to use this, Go ahead and see if you can solve the following equation using fsolve. Think about what it's going to want and uh, see if you can put this together before you even look at how to use it. And then we'll go through and use it. So uh, pause the video here. Go ahead and see if you can work this problem. Okay, we have the library from scipy.optimize import fsolve. We know we're going to be solving it in the form f of x equals 0, so we're going to need a function to solve. def f of x return x squared minus 5. So that gives us the function. And then we know we're going to use fsolve. And we might guess that fsolve is going to want the function, and it's going to want the initial guess. So let's give it a guess of like 2. And when we run this, in fact, we get the answer. And that's it. So if we then go... Uh, f of that answer, we'll store this as x, if we go f of x, then the result is e to the minus 15, if essentially 0. So that works pretty intuitively. We define the function, then we in the form f of x equals 0, and then we solve, give f solve the function and a guess, and it returns the answer. <laughs> Okay, so solving nonlinear equations, again, we put it in the form f of x equals 0, and we know the function, and we want the value of x that gives f of x equals 0. And the steps are to define the function, to set an initial guess, and then from scipy.optimize import fsolve, and then we do fsolve on the function, the guess, and this returns the answer x. So again, f is the name of the function we're solving, which we create and x0 is our guess. <clears throat> so again, you can work through this exercise. Let's do it one more time. We define the function def f of x, return x squared minus 5, and then we go f solve, pass the function, and a guess, and we'll go x0 equals 2, and the answer will be this, and we can print the answer, 2.23. And we can verify also f of x is this tiny number. So we know it worked because we got uh, the value. Now if you want the other root, the root that it gives you depends on the initial guess. So if you give it a different initial guess, it, it will uh, possibly find the other root. Okay, so if we want multiple equations and multiple unknowns, <coughs> suppose we're solving for two equations and two unknowns. In this case, we would have h of y z equals 0 and g of y z equals 0. So we have two functions, h and g, and, and both of them are functions of two variables, y and z. So our problem is to find y and z such that both of these equations are 0. So an example would be h of y z is y plus 2z, and g of y z is sine y over z. So um, can a couple of questions. Do you think that Python's fsolve function can do this? How would you go about specifying the problem? What if there were three equations and three unknowns, or four equations and four unknowns, etc.? If you were coding fsolve, how would you account for all of these possibilities? So go ahead and pause the video and think through these questions and think about what would change if you were going to try to use fsolve. How would you specify the problem? How would you give it to fsolve? Okay. So a general approach is instead of writing f of x equals 0, we write 
we put arrows over the top. So we treat x as a vector of unknowns. We pass in a vector of unknowns and we get out a vector of functions. So again, we pass in a vector of unknowns, we get out a vector of functions. And this allows us to generalize the solver so that it will work with an arbitrary number of unknowns and an arbitrary number of equations. So here are some details. Again, we have these two functions. For computer solvers, we want to write this as a generic standard notation. We want all of our solvers to look like f of x equals 0. So if we rewrite these as instead of h and g and y and z, we write this as f0 and f1 and x0 and x1, then we would have f0, x0, x1 equals x0 plus 2x1 f1 x0 x1 equals sine x0 over x1. So we're making correspondence between um, elements of our unknown array. So y and z will become x0 and x1 and h and g will become f0 and f1. And in uh, matrix notation we could write this f0 f1 equals function 1 function function 0 function 1 and then equals 0, 0, or uh, again, f of x equals 0, where 0, x, and f are vectors. So in this case, we're going to define a function. It's going to take an array of unknowns and return to us an array of function values. We're going to use the same solver, but we give it an array of initial guesses. And there's a link to more information. <laughs> So let's go ahead and try that out on solving the following two equations and two unknowns using y0 is 1 and z0 is 2 as initial guesses. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this exercise. Okay, so as stated, we need to define the function, def, and we can call the function anything we want. I'm going to call it hg, and it's a function of our unknowns, which is a vector of unknowns. I'm going to call it yz. And then for convenience, I'm going to make some helper variables, y equals yz0, and z is yz1. And then I'm going to write h uh, equals y plus 2z, whoops, 2 times z, and g is np dot sine y divided by z. And then we return in p dot array h and g. So I'm return. I pass in an array of unknowns and recover them for convenience so that it's easier to write my two functions. And then I return an array of function values. And then f solve is going to vary my array of unknowns so that this final array is zero, because that's what I want. I want h and g to be zero. Okay, and then we can give ourselves an array of initial guesses. So we'll go yz0 is np.array uh, 1 and 2, and then f solve. So our solution yz equals f solve. Give it the function hg and the initial guess yz0. And oops, don't have np, import numpy is np. Okay, and we get these two values as our solutions. So there's nothing special about these names. I could have, according to the previous um, notation, I could have called this f and x, and we could have written this as uh, f0 and f1. Note these aren't indices. This is just a name. And this would be x1 plus 2 times x0 times 2 times x1, and this is x1, and x0, and then the array f0 and f1, and, um, and we can just call this x if we like, and f, let's call this x0, x0, and uh, x, and we get this same thing. So, for me, um, it's easier for me to understand what my problem is really giving me. If I 
use a function name and variable names that are descriptive of what's being passed in. So this works just fine, but I probably prefer to use um, hgyz, recover my variables, and then write my functions, return an array of functions, like so. Okay, let's do another exercise. So solve this problem, <coughs> and reasonable guesses are given. So again, go ahead and pause the video and work through this using what we just uh, studied. Okay, for this one, again, def, I'll call this um, just f of x, y, z. And we'll go x is x, y, z, 0, y, z, 2, 1. And that makes it easier to write these functions. So I'm going to write f0 is x squared plus y squared minus 1, because I want them in the form f equals 0. And f1 is x times y plus y times z plus 1.1. And f2 is y squared plus z squared minus 2. And then we return np.array an array of functions, f0, f1, f2. Then give it an initial guess, x, y, z, 0 equals np.array, 2, 2, 2. And we'll do, let's make sure those are integer arrays. And then we'll do um, f solve, well, x, y, z equals f solve, the function and the initial guess. And then if we want, we can go x equals, we can use the same, the same code that we have here. If we want to recover the individual variables, we can go print x, y, z. <coughs> we get the following answers. <coughs> and again, we can make sure that they work. f of x, y, z, which is effectively zero tiny numbers. Okay, so there's another example, multiple equations and multiple unknowns. Okay, and the final exercise, the Colebrook equation. So this one's a little bit more realistic. Um, instead of just x, y's, and z's, the Colebrook equation is used to find the pressure drop across pipes, compute pumping requirements and costs. The Colebrook equation is given by the following um, set of the following equation. Here, f is our unknown. It's not the function, f is the variable we're solving for. And this whole equation is effectively our function. So if we bring this right hand side onto the left, then we have one over root f plus two log 10, blah, 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 equals zero. And here it's big F is equal to zero. Little f is our unknown, but we have these parameters, the Reynolds number and epsilon over d, which are parameters. So our goal is to solve this equation for a whole bunch of Reynolds numbers and for a single value of epsilon over d and then plot the results. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this. Remember to start simple and then add more functionality and verify your results at each step. Think about what are the different parts that are required. This is going to be much more valuable if you pause and try to solve it before looking at the solution, so go ahead and do that and we'll go and work through this. So we have a list of Reynolds numbers, an eps d value, and a guess. So first we need the function def f of f r e eps d. <coughs> and we write the function. So we can just go return 1 over square root of f plus np2 times np.log 10 eps d over 3.7, 2.51 over Reynolds number over p dot square root of f. Okay. And then we can go f solve, pass it the function, and we need a guess, f guess. And then in this case, our function has extra arguments. So we can again use the args equals to pass in extra arguments. So let's do like 5,000 for Reynolds number. And eps d is, well, eps d, eps d. And we get the following result. 
which is good. So now that we can do that, let's go ahead and try to do it for a whole bunch of values. So we'll make an array of f, f equals np dot empty. Well, um, we'll give it an init the initial guess. So f guess times, well, I guess we can do it either way. We'll just do um, np dot empty, empty len re. So we initialize the solution because we want the result for a whole bunch of Reynolds numbers. So let's make an array to hold it. And then we can loop over all of them for i in range uh, len f. Then we have um, solving the same function with the same guess. Now the args are the current Reynolds number, rei and eps d, and the result can go in f i equals this. Okay. Now if we look at um, f, we can see that it is an array of answers, and then we can uh, go ahead and plot the uh, Reynolds number and f, and we'll leave that as an exercise for you. Okay, so that's a quick intro to using uh, the solver in Python.